Thank you so much, Scott and David Bouvet. We appreciate your music talents. I'm so excited about today as we are launching our new camera system, uh, new broadcast programming through Vimeo, which enables us to do so much more. Thank you for your generous giving. Those who gave so generously through our Do Unto Others Fund have now enabled this program to become a reality. And today's our first day with these new cameras and only going to be expanding it even more. We're so grateful for those working in our multimedia program who spent six hours yesterday getting everything all set up. And even more work is yet to be done to expand and to continue to improve the quality of our broadcasting program. We're so delighted that we can do this and we're so appreciative of the generous giving that made this possible. And I just want to say thank you so much. Great things are in store for us here at City of Light. Let me tell you about a story. Years ago, my uncle had invited me to go fishing and wanted me to catch fish so badly. He wanted us to really experience this wonderful exhilaration, the moment of reeling in a catch and feeling like you really have achieved the goal of a true fisherman. So he took us to his private fish pond. He had a pond that he had stocked with fish, so many fish, an abundance of fish and certainly expected us to reel in quite the catch. So there I was with others and we were casting and casting and casting and continually trying to fish over the afternoon and catching nothing. And I was continually getting more and more frustrated because I could see his face all filled with the expectation that we were gonna catch an abundance of fish. Certainly we would be pulling in a loaf for dinner and having a feast, yet no one was catching anything. And he became so frustrated. He began to say to each one, I brought you here to catch fish. This is the easiest place to catch a fish. The pond is stuck. They're just waiting for your line. What's wrong? Well, have you ever felt like your life is one where you fish and you fish and you catch nothing. We may feel like that. When it comes to Bible stories, today's lesson is the story of our life. Oh my, this lesson is so real for us. It's our journey. It's your story. It's my story. It's our story. And it is coming to life for us as we look into it in depth. It's the story of fish, disciples fishing all night long and catching nothing. And you can imagine their frustration. Then suddenly Jesus, in the early morning dawn light, looks out across the waters from the shoreline and calls to those disciples and said, have you caught anything? And their response was, ah. Oh. All night and achieving nothing. Are we like that and where we're saying, you know, I have traveled this journey of my spiritual life I followed a religious pathway, but I'm not seeing the abundance. I'm not seeing the results. I'm not drawing in all that I want or that. And so when we look at this story that illustrates a powerful illust uh, ancient truth for us, we find that this story is filled with such rich symbolism. And to understand its true meaning, we have to look at the little nuances and the clues that the writers have included in scripture so that we might find a true meaning because it's not just a story of Jesus and the disciples. It's so much more. It's a powerful lesson. It's this wonderful psychological drama of our life and how it unfolds and offering us insight, wisdom, and direction as to how to best live that life to the fullest. So let's look at this story and all of its little clues, nuances. First, we find the disciples are fishing with nets. And these nets are symbolic of the that which is drawing in or catching our thoughts. Because our mind is this net. And it's been cast out over and over and over our thoughts. And we have to look at what we're drawing in to our thinking on a day-to-day -day basis. And quite often we sort of cast our nets out on the side of a boat where it's been on the more negative side, on the fear-based side. 
on the side of questioning, wondering, stress, feeling as if that we're living in a world of lack, wondering where God's wonderful blessings really are for our journey. And we're toiling all night long and we're in this uh, uh, mode of thinking that we're just feeling like I have been just wondering where or where are my blessings? Where are they? And it feels as if our nets are empty. Well, I have shared with you that there are many times I've encountered people, especially during this pandemic, where people are thinking, you know what? I can't imagine, I'll take account of all that I've lost during this time. I've lost friends, I've lost connections, I've lost community, I've lost social opportunities, I've lost opportunities to be with my grandkids and children. I've lost my job, I've lost finances, I've lost uh, all kinds of things that are going on and on with the financial challenges in our world. And before you know it, they're just echoing, echoing over and over again. I've lost and I lack. Casting out our nets constantly in thoughts, thoughts of lack. Thoughts of saying, you know, there's not enough in our world. When this pandemic hit and we began to shut things down here at City of Life, a spiritual center that is traditionally known for entertaining at least a thousand people coming through our doors in some weeks in workshops and programming, thousand people coming in with lots of life and energy, the elevator going ding, ding, ding as people move them up the floors and people coming out of classrooms and offices and exchanging conversation in the hall and suddenly everything shut down. Wow, all the spiritual work here seemed to come to an end, it felt like. And City of Light, for me, almost felt like I was coming to a ghost town. To travel to come here to some days and to find that there's no one at all and the floors are dark and wondering where, what would be our ministry. And yet, rather than focusing on the sense of lack and loss and all the things that we're missing, we began to think about ways of experiencing abundance within our life. And so we began to put the idea of reaching out to thousands through multimedia, through Facebook and YouTube. And today we have these beautiful cameras that are now capturing this moment of the vision that we had Rather than thinking of loss, we're thinking of gain. And we're casting our nets on a new side of the boat. And what's happening is now we're reaching out to thousands more than we could ever have reached and touched with a powerful message of practical spirituality that can change your life. We're offering this opportunity in a world that may be focused and casting its nets in the realm of lack, while we're casting our nets on the other side, in the realm of abundance and transformation for the all good and the highest and best. Because what happens is that casting of net, that thought pattern, that embracing the kind of thinking that's all in the negative zone, what happens is catching nothing. It's almost as if our nets have holes in them. And that which we're trying to grasp, the goodness of God, we're trying to pull it in. Well, we've allowed holes in our nets with this kind of thinking that it just seems to slip out. And that catch that we want to bring in, that which we want to draw into our lives is slipping away from us because all we can think of is the perspective of lack and limitation, negative thoughts of sense of stress and worry within our life. How, how, how is this gonna work out? How is it gonna manifest for us? And again, one of the big holes that we put in our nets is simply that word H-O-W because we want to focus on the how always, and we're trying to figure it out, and we can't come up with the how. We can't come up with enough how in our life as to how this is all going to manifest. Remember, the how is not our responsibility. The how is God's. Our work is the work of trust, casting out the net in that positive trusting. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God, and God will direct your paths. That's the promise. That's the beauty from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now the C in this story is really the mental realm in which we exist. And our work or our toil of all kinds is a combination of this mental and physical ex exertion. Now sometimes we're just working too hard at life. And we're making life very hard because we're constantly working from the nets that have been cast out into the negative, into the thoughts of how, and I don't know how it's gonna happen for me. 
And we're then working from that perspective where we're constantly thinking, this is difficult and life is hard and how to draw in the catch of abundance seems overwhelming. Now, when our mind is transformed to the higher level of thinking and we begin to think now from the positive, from the perspective of abundance, God's goodness is all around me and I begin to claim it and speak that, suddenly that transition brings about a totally different outcome. Now it's interesting, in this story, the boat is in the same water. It's in the Sea of Galilee, in the same, shall we say, mental uh, thinking, but casting the net on the other side made all the difference. So it's not like, you know, some big change has to happen. The transition is simply in thought and perspective in our lives. For the boat was in the same water, the nets were on the opposite side, the fish were so close, they're just on the other side of the boat. So close. But all it took was just moving the net to the other side. All it takes in our life so many times is to shift our thinking from the fear, the lack, the doubt, the stress, to now moving to the possibilities that are infinite in God and beginning to embrace that kind of thinking on the day-to-day -day basis because the blessings of God are so near to you. I want you to just extend your hand right now. I want to tell you, the goodness of God is just even closer than this. If you could reach out and grab the goodness of God, if you could reach out and touch it, if you could pull it to you, it's even closer than that. You need not even extend a physical reach. It's there in you. For the goodness of God, the kingdom of God dwells within you, and within you is this immense beauty, abundance, goodness that awaits for you. There's a reciprocal action that happens between our patterns of thought and feeling, and it's determined every experience that we've ever had. So if we've been casting our nets out into the negative, casting our nets out into the sense of it's never going to happen for me. It's never going to work out. It's never going to be this way. What happens is our nets do not draw in the abundance that's so near, so close to us. The goodness, so close. It's just merely a breath away, shall we say. The goodness of God being there. So what happens is we have to make that shift. And by using our mind, by thinking from the abundance of God's goodness, what happens is we actually use our divine God-given machinery. Let's call it machinery. That relieves us from the weariness of muscular labor and the task of trying to do it and work it the hard way. Because we're trying to think, how is this gonna work out? And we're thinking from the hard way. What have I gotta do? How many jobs do I need to take? How many tasks do I need to do? How many things do I need to do to, how, how is this gonna work out in my life? How, how am I gonna work through this pandemic? How am I gonna exist? How is blessing gonna come? Again, we're working from the difficult, but by just being still and knowing God's divine goodness, we cast our nets on a new side and know that blessing is coming to us. This whole experience of City of Light as your pastor now for almost 20 years has been one of just constantly realizing when we cast our net on the opposite side, when we cast our nets on the side that says, I believe all things are working together for good. Well, they work together for good. I don't know how many times I've encountered people who have said, you know, it's not going to work. It won't happen. We've come to doorsteps of saying, as a ministry, there's not enough funds. You may have to close. You may not be able to maintain your facility. On it goes. And yet we continue to trust because the how is not ours. The how is the divine. Our work is to cast our net, our thinking, our thought in the right way of thinking. And that's the thinking that God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And what happens is that we begin to take up advantage of the divine guidance of God. The power of believing in the unfolding of God's goodness then makes our life much easier because we just say right now, right here, in this moment, God is doing something amazing in my life. Well, we're beginning to claim that and we're opening the doors of our, our individual experience 
to receive in greater ways. Now the net of our thought works hard and long, often in the darkness of human understanding, and it seems like it gains little. But when we leave the human understanding and we're now moving into the realm of the spiritual, what's the difference? Well, in the physical, there's all kinds of limitation, right? But in the spiritual, there's infinite possibilities for us. There's all kinds of opportunities that are available to us in the realm of the divine. So what we're doing is moving from hard to easy. We're moving from the difficult now to that which is more comfortable. We're moving to that which is meant to be for our lives because God intended for you to live a life of abundance, prosperity, of goodness, of love and grace and mercy, a life that's not full of all the stress and fear that the world wants to dump on us. A life of worry, a life of questioning and wondering, but a life of great confidence and knowing that all things are working together for good. This is the right side where we want to cast our net and, and we want to be fishing and pulling in the abundance from there. Because it's there that we're going to experience something called spiritual supply. Spiritual supply. It begins with knowing why we experience lack. Why do we experience lack? Because we experience lack because of our inability to make contact with the divine supply. Okay? We're experiencing lack because we are not thinking, making contact in our thoughts, in our mind, in our outlook with the infinite supply of God's goodness for our lives. So we want to make this contact, being connected in consciousness, in our thoughts, in our mind, being connected with the divine presence, knowing that there is an infinite abundance. So you may go through your day time after time and being faced by looking at the bank account. This is, wait a minute, there's not an abundance here. I don't know if I have enough. We may go through all kinds of experiences where we're constantly oh, stirred by the physical and its limitations. Ah, but by faith, our eyes see a different outcome. By faith, we see a totally different experience. I love the story of a rabbi who was wanting to travel to a northern city, and he got in line to purchase a train ticket. Now, he had no money, but he stood in line. And as the day went on, the line was so long for people wanting to purchase tickets, the sun grew hotter and hotter, and a young man saw the rabbi standing in line and said, Rabbi, oh, please go sit down, and I'll get the ticket for you. So the young man stood in the line and purchased the ticket and came over to the rabbi and said, here's your ticket. The ticket is $50. And the rabbi said, I don't have any money. And the young man said, well, what were you doing in line? He said, I was preparing to buy a ticket. How? How were you preparing to buy a ticket? I did it by faith, believing it would be so. And look, I have a ticket. He said, now what will I do? Rabbi said, get in line. Well, do you understand that when we're living from that kind of perspective, we've now cast our nets in a totally different side of the boat. We're fishing in new waters. Waters of saying, I am walking by faith and believing that the abundance of God is mine. And this is true. It's been demonstrated over and over again. The story of this congregation is one of constantly manifesting the divine. In the moment, in the right time when God has blessed us so immensely, we rejoice and we celebrate, but we look back and we remember, wait a minute, we were there standing in line wondering, knowing that we didn't have what the divine provided for us. Well, this is a biblical story. It's a story repeated over and over again. The children of Israel leaving Egypt, coming out and wandering in the wilderness, and what? They had no food. And God provides manna from heaven. And every day they went out and got fresh manna. In a world where we say, wait a minute, we don't know where the food's coming from. Food was provided. Jesus feeds the 5,000. It was a time when people were saying, wait a minute, they're hungry. There are many people gathered on this hillside. Please, Jesus, dismiss them that they may go and eat and find food because it's getting late in the day. And in the midst of what may seem like a sense of lack, Jesus takes the small gift of loaves and fishes, breaks it, blesses and shares, and all are fed. 
Do we not understand that these lessons are our lessons for our life? It simply say, when we change our thinking, when we cast our nets on the other side of the boat, our lives are transformed. And there is an amazing, powerful, unique outcome that's so different than just looking from the physical aspects of the world. I'm inviting you to begin to say, how might I cast my net in a different way? How might I change my thinking? How might I evolve and transform my very outlook in life? How might I renew my mind in a way that's so transformational that I'm welcoming the very thinking that is this of Jesus, that all things are possible to them who believe. Now, the Spirit is wonderful within us, and it is a supply that's found within us. For God's abundance, God's supply is within, and the very form it will take in maybe food or money, clothing, housing, transportation, provision of some sight, is coming from this wonderful understanding of the divine at work within us. The divine power that manifests, it lies within us. So go within. Go within and contact this wonderful presence of the divine. Go within and spend this time with God. Shut the door in your prayer life, as we say. Close out all the distractions. Go within and discover this is this wonderful divine supply that awaits for you. And this supply is infinite. And it's omnipresent. It's everywhere you may be. You do not have to live on yesterday's manna, shall we say, or do we have to gather today's manna for tomorrow? Because the supply is infinite. And that was the lesson for the children of Israel. Because every day was there fresh and new. In fact, if they gathered up manna for tomorrow, thinking in some way there would not be enough. So I'm going to get enough and hoard it and hold on to it. What happened is it spoiled. Because the lesson was every day we go for the fresh newness in experience. Every day there is infinite supply for us. It's not running out. Exodus chapter 16, 35 says the Israelites ate manna for 40 years. Wow. Until they came to the land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. It was an infinite supply every single day for the journey of their life. Do we understand that these Bible stories are speaking to you and me? They're trying to tell us, do you recognize infinite supply and its availability to our lives? Let's look at the fruit on the trees. Fruit on the trees are symbols of supply. They're not the supply itself. We have a beautiful apple tree we planted in our yard and it is just beginning to produce apples. Last season, last year, we had about 12 apples off this uh, new planting, and we were so excited about it. But the, when the fruit is gone, the supply is not gone. Think about that. The fruit is not the supply. When the fruit is gone, the supply is not gone. The supply is operating inside the tree and will appear the next season. So it's not like supply is gone once you've taken the fruit. Here's the beautiful thing. As God blesses you in some way, our instant thought is, oh, I should hoard some of this. I should keep some of this. I gotta hold back on this. Wait a minute, that's not all that God has for you. We can share, we can give, we can demonstrate the fact that there is continual supply. It's ongoing. We don't need to say, oh, I gotta save some, I gotta hoard some, I gotta hold on some, because there's infinite supply that's flowing in us, through us at all times when we understand these spiritual teachings. Thinking in this new way is the right thinking that's going to bring about, attract. It's going to draw to us this wonderful abundance of our life. And this is the reason why so many fail to demonstrate because they want to cling to some sort of negative, fear-based, selfish, unjust thoughts that say, I need a hoard, I need to hold on. But when we understand the infinite supply, it's about this wonderful exchange of flow. Do you understand flow? Flow, that's right. It comes in, it goes out, and more comes in and goes out because it's in movement at all times. 
And the divine supply, the goodness of God, is always in movement. It's never some moment with, oh, wait a minute, God's supply is cut off. It's, it's stuck. That's the end of it. Or I've used up all the goodness of God that God's going to bestow on my life and there's no more to come. That's not true at all. So the key in our life is this, to awaken this beautiful passage. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Righteousness being right thinking. Seek first the right thinking. Casting your nets on the right side, putting out the thoughts that are those that are welcoming, that are going to draw in your abundance. And all these things will be added unto you, says the scripture. All these things, everything is going to be added unto us. So what happens is we need to stop fishing on the wrong side of life. The infinite supply will be demonstrated in our thoughts and our consciousness that is filled with the awareness that God is my source of all good. And that source has no limitation. And all that I need and all that I so desire is provided for me in God. I remember that day when my uncle said, I'm bringing you to fish in my pond. It's the easiest place for you to catch fish. Now, I want to tell you this. The easiest place for you to catch the abundance is within. And I'm inviting you to cast your net right here and now in this wonderful consciousness, this thought and belief, I am casting out and I am at the easiest place to draw in abundance. It's within me. It's the place where there's no worry, no fear, nor stress because you're in the divine presence of God. You're in this wonderful awareness that God is in me, through me, around me, and always for me. And it's there that you will catch the infinite blessings of God's goodness. Now just be ready. Just be ready. Because you may have to call on one another to help bring in the abundance of goodness. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to say, oh, hey, come help me. There's so much goodness coming into my life. There's so much abundance. I feel so much love. Let me share some. So much grace. Let me share some. So much wonderful, infinite blessing. So much wholeness and completeness. So much of an awareness of the divine in my life. I've got too much. How can I share it? Help me bring it in. Help me draw it all into my life. Because what we have to do is simply just cast our net. Change our thinking to a new thought, begin to fish in the waters of God's infinite blessing on the other side. Jesus spoke to those disciples. That story speaks to us today. Where are you fishing? The easiest place to catch fish is right here. Go within. The infinite supply awaits you. Amen. Amen.